Recognized nationwide as one of the country's premier white-tailed deer hunting states, Wisconsin has both an abundant herd and a proven reputation for producing monster bucks. While white-tailed deer have always been an important part of the Wisconsin landscape and culture, their numbers have skyrocketed with changes in agriculture and private wildlife management. Greater deer density allows for increased transmission rates of disease. One of these diseases may be the greatest existential threat to deer in recorded history, chronic wasting disease. I'm excited to finally be making my way out to the Driftless area of Wisconsin to visit the infamous Duran farm and learn how my buddy Doug Duran is changing his hunting and management practices in response to chronic wasting disease. Chronic wasting disease, or CWD, is caused by a natural protein in the deer's body called a prion. Prion proteins can misfold, giving the protein a different formation that makes it resistant to being broken down by the body's natural processes. Problems develop in the deer's brain because the abnormal proteins accumulate to the point they disrupt nervous system function. Afflicted deer lose coordination, become listless, lose body weight, and eventually die. Other prion disorders include mad cow disease in cattle and scrapies in sheep. Chronic wasting disease is easily transmitted through direct or indirect contact with bodily fluids, and while prion disorders are not uncommon, they do remain a mystery to scientists. I thought it would be great to visit Doug and talk about CWD because he is a proactive landowner taking conservation into his own hands. Welcome to my farm. Yeah, yeah, I finally made it. Yeah, it's so great to have you here, man. I mean, it's, uh, it seems like we've talked about you coming time and time again, and here you are, finally. It just seems and I had a little... to come out here on my own. Let's <laughs> make it happen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's an action-packed week. Well, I sure hope so. This event that we're having, uh, the, the Doe Derby, uh, ought to be really interesting, and this is the first time that we've done anything like this. I just want to see the participation and, and what you have going on with, because um, you do a bunch of stuff with like getting new hunters out, yep. getting folks who uh, are in a meat crisis right. set up, right. and and just a lot of general education. And education is a big part of what we're doing here, and and to be able to speak with people intelligently about it in a landowner to landowner, hunter to hunter basis. Sometimes they'll listen to a guy like me a little bit more than someone who's just kind of throwing scientific stuff at him. We got a couple of days left of the antler deer season mm -hmm. and it would be very cool to run into anything that is in some form represented on your wall here. Yes. Sweet. So what are we doing right now? Though? Folks are out there cooking for us and um which is strange. It's yeah, which is my job, Doug. well, it's usually is usually dry, but you're not going to get you're not going to get away with not cooking. Sounds good. Perfect. <laughs> It's morning on the Duran farm, and it's going to be an action-packed day. But first, Doug wants to do a few chores in the barn, then stop by the CWD sample site to show me how it works. This barn was built, finished in 1917. And when I was a kid, it was a dairy farm. But we quit dairy farming in 1988. So here's what we need to do. What do we need to do? Crawl under that thing and scatter this feed around in those containers. Hello, Helen. That's Whitney. Nice one. There you go. Gonna have to fix that, Cal. Now you're farming. Now you are farming. Now I'm farming. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Okay. Here we go. Crossing things off the list. Yeah. With the cows taken care of for the day, we are off to Doug's next responsibility, gathering the CWD samples and taking them to the testing site. This is our self-service CWD check-in station. It's a pretty simple process. People come here, they cut the head off of their deer, they put a tag in the ear. I open every one of them up and just make sure the paperwork is correct. And then from here, I will uh, get them down to the intake station where they take the lymph nodes out and the testing process begins. Okay. 
any hunter anywhere in the state wants their deer tested for CWD can get it tested. And what happens is if this deer tests positive, he'll get a replacement tag for another buck. Wow. So there's some incentive to get your buck tested. CWD testing is crucial for wildlife agencies to determine the prevalence of CWD in wild populations and for informing hunters if their harvested meat is infected. Although no linkage between CWD and human infection has been made, the CDC does not recommend eating CWD positive game meat. I have to point out here that Doug has set up a huge stinky dumpster and a self-service kiosk to deposit carcasses and deer heads for CWD testing. It's open to the public, donations are asked for, but not mandatory. Who the hell does this? The chores are done, we're ready for our afternoon hunt. I'm curious to see how CWD has affected Doug's hunting strategy. CWD transmission research has indicated that the highest spreaders in the deer population are young bucks due to the fact that they have the largest ranges. Folks in the field that I respect about it, they're encouraging not letting young bucks pass. The studies show that those young bucks are gonna be some of the ones that are gonna range out the furthest, that yeah. they're getting kicked out, they're moving on to the next territory, they're looking for new territory. And we saw that here. Our first five positives here were all young deer. Doug and all the hunters on the Duran farm still love big bucks but they are no longer passing up the small ones or preventing first time hunters from taking a fork at horn. By aggressively harvesting young bucks and antlerless deer, Doug is reducing high herd populations, which means healthier ecosystems, healthier deer, and lower CWD rates. Doug's deer management tactics speak for themselves. Since CWD infection rates countywide are at 25%, while at the Duran farm, they're about 5%. So we're gonna change the strategy up a little bit here. I'm gonna hunt my way up to a corner and then just post up on that corner in a ground blind that Doug has set up. And Doug's gonna walk a different section of the farm that he thinks typically if something pushes, it'll push up past that spot. Pretty exciting for me. It's the first time I've actually muzzleloader on it. So the one shot deal is interesting. And for me, it's pretty cool that extending the gun season. I'm most inclined to shoot an antlerless deer. Well, I guess we'll just see what happens and make that decision when we get to it. Now we play the waiting game. Check. Check. No, antler the steer, the whole thing. And I'll tell you this, I've been hunting for 50 years, and that still gets me excited. And I made the right decision there not to shoot. Pretty good spot in here. Tough place to be a pine tree. Doug's conservation philosophy is simple. Learn from the past while working in the present to protect the land for future generations. In his words, it's not ours, it's just our turn. It's the final day of muzzleloader season for antler deer. Doug and I are going to hunt parallel to each other in hopes that one of us may drive a deer the other's way. him so I'm gonna be mooching but also sitting it's a doe a couple of does there's a chance if these does cross through where that, that last batch did be pretty close to in range from here. Everything looks like a deer when you're really trying to find one. I've looked at a lot of stumps through binoculars thinking they were deer. There they come, two does. Nice looking deer. Mature doe with maybe a yearling. They're gonna come down the hill, so let's let them do that. Okay, yeah, they're coming down the hill. It's 
soon as she steps out. Come on, darling. We just got a deer. It ran, kind of peeled back that way. There was a whole bunch of crashing over here. I didn't see it fall, but I'm pretty sure I got a dead deer up here. That deer was the first deer Doug has ever shot with a muzzle loader. Maybe I do like this muzzle loader stuff. It's cool to think that after 50 years of hunting, Doug is still trying something new. Since the deer are still moving around the property, our morning is not over, which is good, as I still need to fill my tag, and since Doug has a conservation tag, he's still able to shoot three more does. That, that, I think we're getting close to Doug. That was the first bang. And when I bumped that deer, I said out loud, that's going straight to Doug. Staring at this meat with the big fat cap on it. I have some sympathy for the folks who don't want to turn these things in for CWD, because they can't stand the fact uh, they'd be compelled to throw this stuff away. That sometimes is what I've heard people say when I talk to them about CWD. They're like, well, we don't know. They don't know. And my response is, well, they know a lot more now, a lot more now than they did 20 years ago. What are we going to know in another 20 years? Never get tired of that view. It's inspiring to see how a proactive landowner like Doug can help reduce the CWD infection rate on his local deer population. I left Doug at the barn and set out for the final afternoon of muzzleloader season and my last chance for a Wisconsin buck. This situation is a scrape whitetail scrape and this would be a licking branch and there's a couple of whitetail tracks in this but it looks to me like this was an artificial one some some hunter made a mock scrape a fake scrape of their own and broke this branch and leaves it dangling here and maybe puts a little scent right there what bearing that has on this hunt is basically zero it's just a fun deer behavior thing that you know lets you get distracted on a beautiful day what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk way away from this thing, sit in between some bedding areas, hope that during that sit, my scent doesn't blow everything out of the area and I'm just, not just twiddling my thumbs until it gets real dark and real cold. This is the last day of the buck season. Don't see anything laying there. Probably close to a dozen deer sitting there. So. The ground that they're in is like yellow and clean dirt. Should be real easy to track anything that's squirting blood. I'm gonna go with a miss here, which is always better than a bad hit. I'm gonna start walking back and getting ready for rifle season, which starts tomorrow. Doze only. Eric Canania, southern deer and elk biologist from the Department of Natural Resources, has come out to Doug's farm to talk with me about CWD testing. 
Doug's got his kiosk there. When a hunter drops off a head, this is how it's coming to our processing center. It's just a, it's just a head. Now the lymph nodes, we're pulling here. There's multiple lymph nodes in the deer's head and we're pulling retropharyngeal lymph nodes and studies have suggested that the retropharyngeals are uh, the lymph nodes that receive like the first accumulation of, of CWD prions, so that allows us to get earlier detection and, and more accurate results. This, this tissue right here, that's a lymph node. And so I just pull it out. And that's basically the, it's basically the end product. And then, so along with, you know, trying to detect the presence of CWD, what else are you guys looking for? Well, this is this test here just is going to be uh, run just for CWD. So there, there won't be anything else that we're we're getting out of this. It's an interesting deal, right? Especially like in this doe only season. It's a meat season. It really pulls a lot of the gusto out of going out and harvesting does if you potentially can't take the meat home. It, uh, it is a bummer. You gotta have your deer tested, wait for those test results to come back. In Wisconsin, we're striving to improve turnaround times as much as we can so we can, you know, shave off those days and make it easier for folks to take this deer from this state now to a uh, packageable meat that they can enjoy with their friends and family. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources supplies CWD testing for free throughout the state. In addition to this, if a deer tests positive, the hunter gets a replacement tag. They are trying to make the CWD testing process as friendly as possible to encourage participation. Every bit of data is so valuable because this situation is relatively new. The more data we have, the better. Sampling your deer, properly disposing it through those deer carcass dumpsters, it's just it's buying time so that science can catch up and answer those questions. It's day three here on the Duran farm and the start of the antlerless deer season. To encourage participation, Doug started a doe derby with prizes given out to landowners who allow hunting and those who successfully take a doe. For the afternoon adventure, I'm meeting up with Lindsey Braun to go for a rifle hunt. Lindsey is one of the organizers of the Doe Derby, and she is passionate about sourcing her own meat. Lindsey, why would somebody from Vashon Island, which is located in Washington State, travel to Wisconsin, like a CWD rich area of Wisconsin, to hunt deer? You know, I, I first kind of <clears throat> heard about CWD because I own livestock and having scrapies in sheep and goats. And then when I... Which is pretty similar. Right? It's very similar, yeah. yeah. You know, we have a process of how we are able to manage that disease in livestock. And there's not really one yet for CWD, but it's even similar. So coming out and Hunting and managing them seems the best logical way to do that. That's why I'm here. Today is the first day of the Doe Derby, but that's just like something you and, and Doug and a few other folks are, are throwing together, right? Doug kind of had the idea of putting together a little derby that would get people out here harvesting more does, kind of make it a little bit of a competition and bring some awareness to CWD as well. You see one? I thought I saw movement. Ain't nothing can happen until you get like a little bit cold, right? Right. If you're totally comfortable, it just doesn't work out. <laughs> This is what you get when you uh, let strange people hunt with you, I guess. Let that be a lesson for you. Ah, uh, yeah. Would you like to back out of here? No. I would like to back out of here. Fine answer. 
Even though the hunt with Lindsay didn't work out, it was great to get her perspective around CWD. And joining the rest of the people from the Doe Derby around the fire, it was a great feeling of community. Thank you all for coming to the Doe Derby, and, and it's a small but enthusiastic crowd. Why'd you have this idea? Because this, this isn't a state function. Not at all. It's a group of people got together. Uh, we were talking about how can we increase the take during the antlerless hunts, which in our county, the last few years, about 300 deer, 350 deer, and we're, it's not really making that big of an impact. Would you say this is more about taking deer off the landscape or more about CWD? I think it's both because they work together. Um, if we want to reduce CWD in the area, we need to reduce the population. Hunting a CWD zone wasn't what I expected. There is no war on deer. Hunting culture hasn't changed dramatically. If anything, the emphasis on taking deer, big buck or doe, has reinvigorated the hunting culture around here. Reducing population density means a healthier ecosystem, healthier deer, and lower CWD transmission and prevalence rates. While CWD's rising prevalence is alarming, it's encouraging to see that proactive management is relatively simple and replicable.